can't buy It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a beach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. Today is no different. I'm here with Antonio and Carlos of the Condor Agency. And I'm going to formally introduce both of you in a second, but I always like to mention other episodes people should check out of the podcast. One of the reasons we met uh, was through Jason Swank. So shout out to Jason Swank. I have two episodes with him. One, how he built his company to over eight figures and the other of what they're doing and what they're, how they're valuating agencies because they're acquiring agencies as well. So check that episode out. Um, I did an episode with Ian Garlic um, and he talks, you know, he has videocasestory.com where he helps collect customer case stories from companies. And he talks about some of the marketing advice he learned from his dad. They had live dolphins in a restaurant and it wasn't in Orlando, it was in Wisconsin. So listen to some of the things that he walks through uh, in that episode and many, many others uh, on inspiredinsider.com. This episode is brought to you by Rise25. And at Rise25, we help businesses give to and connect to your dream 100 relationships. And how do we do that? We actually are an easy button to help you launch and run your podcast. We do accountability, strategy, and execution of your podcast. And there's a great episode on the five different types of episodes every podcast should create. You can check that out. But for me, Antonio Carlos, we know each other a little bit. Um, The number one thing in my life is relationships. And I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationships. And I found no better way to do that than to profile the people and companies I most admire and let everyone know what they're working on. So if you've thought about podcasting, you should. If you have questions, just go to rise25.com to learn more. And without further ado, we have Antonio Santana and Carlos Cordor. They're from Venezuela, and they're co-founders of the Condor Agency. And they've been working together for over a decade. uh, And they help make U.S. companies more competitive. How do they do that? By helping you leverage the best talent in Latin America. Okay. Uh, They've grown the company to over 70 people, and they recruit people directly for clients, but they also serve as a digital marketing agency with managed services as well. So uh, thank you both for joining me. Hey, Jeremy. Thanks for having us. So let's start off with a little bit about Condor Agency and what you do. Yeah, well, I think you you summarized it pretty well, full service digital marketing. So, you know, the usual channels, uh, website, the, the design and development, SEO, Pay media in particular, since we're focused on B2B, that's uh, heavy on Google Ads and LinkedIn, but also some Facebook, Instagram, and the other ones. Uh, email marketing and marketing automation is a big one. And also we're heavy on analytics, web analytics, and reporting. Um, and more recently, especially after COVID, uh, like you mentioned, also simply recruiting talent directly to uh, our U.S. clients. So they can, you know, if they know what 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 they want to do, they can just hire somebody directly and have those uh, cost savings by working with uh, our Latin American folks. With the agency, you know, a lot of times people start off doing one thing and things evolve. When you first started the agency, what was the service that you started with or the services? It was, yeah, it was managed services. Um, we... The reason why we started is we, before the agency, and like you mentioned, you know, more than 10 years ago, we had our own projects. We were essentially the owners. Uh, we were on the owner's user, on the, let's say on the client side, right? So, you know, the agencies that we work with, you know, they would take forever. They were really expensive. They didn't really understand what we needed or the business. Um, and then, you know, living in Chicago and seeing the service that U.S. agencies were giving to to let's say medium-sized companies or growing companies that were not enterprise or fortune 1000 yet you know you know we saw that opportunity so we started condor leveraging latin american talent uh and passing on those cost saves via managed service across those channels and then you know especially you know after covid that people felt 
more comfortable working remotely, you know, we started growing the recruiting and staffing side of things. And typically, I mean, with the managed services, we've been working with B2B companies, uh, typically in consulting, finance, IT, uh, because they have, uh, I mean, marketing team, but they want to maybe handle things with an agency. But in the recruiting and staffing side services, it's more oriented to digital marketing agencies because uh, they typically have the know-how. They just want people and they want to leverage uh, this talent with Latin American people. Of course, it's going to be more affordable, but it's not going to be that you sacrifice quality because, I mean, you will have better skill or maybe with more years of experience and even with those qualities you will still save like 50 percent uh cost so that's i mean digital marketing agencies are typically our yeah target audience in the recruiting uh yeah services I want to ask a little bit, we'll talk about, we'll get into it because I want to hear your thoughts on recruiting, the recruiting process, the hiring process. But um, Carl, I'll start with you. You know, you worked in agencies for probably over five years before you even started your own. So you have a lot of experience there. What were some of the lessons you took from the previous agencies that you worked at that you brought to Condor? Mm -hmm. Well, I think there there are a few. Um, one is that U.S. agents, I mentioned, they're really built to serve Fortune 1000 clients. What I mean by that is that they charge, you know, $200 an hour or more. Uh, all of their teams and their structure and their day-to-day, -day, you know, if, if it's a $30,000 project, um and it's it's small for them right obviously you know when you when you pay a hundred thousand dollars a year in salaries for a for a you know either a senior analyst or a junior manager you know that's what you have to charge to make it profitable so that's coming from venezuela where or you know and being from latin america in venezuela where salaries especially at a time of crisis when i left were so much lower i i was you know a little shocked by how expensive some of these agencies were and how little attention they paid to clients that were not fortune 1000 right so that's one thing but I, I mean on the other one obviously you know the us and the economy you know they moved fast they move fast they do a, they do a great job they do help clients with strategy uh and add value you know to the right clients, right? So that's something that we have tried to to put on our DNA in Condor because you know in the rest of the world people let's say move a little slower, right? So that's a learning. You know we we cannot sacrifice that. You know we cannot. We definitely need to be, um, you know, playing playing the same league with these agents in terms of the quality of the service, the speed of response, uh, uh, and really how how everyone moves here in, in, in let's say corporate America or in, in the competitive side of, of the US economy. Um I'm, I'm sure there are more, but those are the that, those were those would be the two ones that that yeah. have come to mind. Yeah, you saw the opportunity because the there were certain clients they were serving and there were certain clients they weren't serving. Um to Antonio, what about you? Before you met in, in your previous business, what lessons did you learn there? I mean, I, I think we understood a lot how to identify uh, talent uh, because, I mean, we've been working for the past 15 years and initially it was complicated to have like a identify talent, uh, interview them, how to, uh, I don't know, find them, find them where they are. And uh, I mean, our first years were very rough in terms of talent, uh, retention, uh, how to, I mean, be a leader for them. And it was like school during those projects. And we started to develop like a solid system to identify this talent. Uh, 
and we started to grow uh, from there. And once we decided to, I mean, that that, that we wanted to uh, build our own agency, we already had years of experience like recruiting, uh, having a team, uh, consolidating uh, relationships be between the team. And I, I would say that like those years were key for for the years that uh, that that we have had the agency because I mean it it was not like starting from scratch it was like you were already uh, having uh, I mean experience in 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 consolidating things and when COVID happened uh, I mean and and we identified that that companies in the U S. Uh, understood that working from home was uh, a reality. We already had like a solid recruiting system to jump into this new line of service. So I would say that that, that was really important in the previous years. What are some things you do that's important to identify talent? And then we can go into the recruiting process a little bit. But when you see a candidate, because you are constantly recruiting, and what do you do? What's something that you look at to identify talent that other companies should should look at as well? I mean, we we have like a scoring system, and like for example, we we care much for English. Of course, English is really important. Uh, in the scoring system, we have what we call the Condor values. Uh, so it's essentially it's soft skills, but uh, oriented to to our values, and we in the algorithm or the formula we give the most uh, value to to our counter values because we believe in soft skills. We believe that people that I mean are hungry and they want to grow fast. It's the most important for for example, uh, one of our values is winning mentality. And it's oriented because we always like sports uh, and and we played sports. and it, it's uh, I mean, you you can do the analogy between the sports and how they reached to to became the I mean the greatest of all time. and it's it was related to hard work, to lean, learning for from failures and things like that. And in our tests, we try to identify as much if they have that greed, if they they, they are hungry for doing more, uh, or or if they, they just want to enter in a company for the payroll or like, I don't know, working from uh, nine to six, those type of talent, we, we don't like. We, we like the people with hungry and and they feel excited or challenged to work with companies in the US. So so I would say that's really important for us. I don't know, Carlos, if you so you look for, some... you know, obviously in, you want someone English speaking so they can work with someone in the US. Yeah. They soft skills, winning mentality, grit, hunger. They they like the challenges based on values. What else do you look for is, that's in the scoring system? Well, in the scoring systems, of course, there's the technical part. I mean, we have a lot of tests. For example, if they are applying for a paid media position, we have our own paid media test based on, on what we do with the clients. Uh, if uh, I mean, I mean, we have uh, all the tests basically on on a daily basis because we're doing a lot of paid media tests, uh, paid media work for a client, and we typically send the same things to to the candidate to see if they are up to to the work we're doing with the clients. Uh, yeah, and the, the other factor, just to to finalize discussion about the forming and the scoring system is uh, salary expectation. Obviously, you know if you're gonna if you're willing to double people's salary, yeah, you can you can you can get out anyone. Yeah, if you're gonna pay a hundred million dollars a year for a baseball player, you're gonna get anyone, right? The the challenge is you know not overpaying, right? So that's also a, a factor in the formula. Uh, and I would say, be you know, when hanging outside of the U.S., independent if it's Latin America, Asia, Europe, wherever, um, one thing to keep in mind is that the rest of the world 
doesn't move as fast as the US, you know, especially uh, in a professional in the professional environment. So you definitely need to filter out people that have a mentality of, uh, let's say, more a uh, more of a, a socialist countries where they work less and the rhythm is much slower. And it's like this cynicism uh, against your employer and this resentment against your employer. Right? You need to definitely weed those people out because they will be no good for your company, even if they have the technical skills or, you know, they're, you know, it's not like they're dumb, you know, they know how to talk their way around an interview and, and emphasize on their hard skills, but you really need to, to listen and find who those people are uh, because they are not, if they don't truly believe in uh, being competitive and, and being coachable and, and having that winning mentality and really being eager to be part of the U S of those competitive u.s companies if that's not really their dream already then it's going to be tough right so that's i would say that's a, a, a big one you mentioned a good point um about talking you know people can show up and look good on the surface yeah. and so what is a maybe a test or an interview question that you use to evaluate the soft skills what would be an example yeah, I mean, for example, uh, our recruiting test, it's long because you you need to pass all the, all the steps to, I mean, because in each of the steps, maybe you can show, uh, I don't know what you're, what you're saying. Like maybe uh, we identify that not, not everything that he was saying or she was true, no? Uh, and I mean, for example, we have, uh, there's a book, uh, from Carol Dweck. Uh, I, 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 it's, uh, well, it's uh, about identifying growth minds. So, so we have, um, a test to ask a lot of questions for them and it's tricky. And then... Once they pass the test, you you will see if that person it's more oriented to growth or it's more oriented to have a fixed uh, mindset. Uh, also, when they <clears throat> uh, at the end of the of the recruiting process, we we try to bring as much of leadership team as possible. Uh, we call the panel interview. And that's more straightforward uh, interviewing. And we try to give them like situations where they work, may, they, they need to, I don't know, send uh, some uh, deliverables late because the client is expecting them. And we put them like in difficult and hard situations to see how they, how they respond. And I, I think it's very useful because <laughs> when you see the faces, sometimes maybe they get they get uncomfortable uh, and things like that. So we try to one of our another one of our values also it's radical transparency. So we are very candid when we talk to to the yeah to to the candidates that are applying for a job, especially during the panel interview. Uh, and, and I will say that's a, a great filter. It's easy, but but the candidates tend to be more honest during those uh, uh, interviews. Yeah, so you put them in kind of situ you give them situational questions to see how they react in tough situations, and they'll walk you through how uh, they do that. And, yeah, and, Carol, and, do I yeah, go ahead. And, and, and we also have a. It's uh, like a questionnaire or something that it's uh, that we design, uh, and it's questions that we build for each of the our values, uh, and those are like situations, real life situations that if you answer these or that, it will give you a score if you are better or not in our particular set of values. Yep. So we talked about a couple of the pieces right the panel interview the technical test um you know the questionnaire just walk me through a little bit from start to finish about like the recruiting process 
Where does it start, and then what happens next? Okay. Uh, first of all, I I want to start with our team. We have a ten plus team, and we divide it between sourcers. The sourcers are the one, the ones that are very active on LinkedIn, uh, contacting people. Uh, and it's uh, usually, I mean, you need to contact, I don't know, let's say a thousand people to get a hundred applicants because as you know, people on LinkedIn, they don't tend to answer. Uh, so, and th th those are the sources. And they also do screening uh, initially. And if they feel this is a good candidate during the screening process, uh, and, and if the people are open to, to hear our proposal, they become applicants and we set an interview for them. And it uh, and now the interviewing part of the team appears. So we have interviewers. Uh, Do they fill they anything out before the interview or? Come again? Do they fill anything out before the interview? Typically, the the candidates or yeah, our team, the candidates. Yeah, I mean, uh, we send like a form uh, that's a screening part. It's a part of the screening process, and they fill it that form. And that those are typical questions like maybe salary expectancy. Uh, I don't know. Maybe if they want, they could go to the office in person, things like that. Uh, and then it comes to the interviewing process. And we have people that are actively interviewing all the time. Uh, we have around 100 to 150 interviews a month. Um, and they apply the scoring system there. They give a scoring for for that interview, and if they pass the the interview, uh, like having a score of three or more, they become qualified, and they pass to the next step. And if they are three point five or more, it's a premium candidate. Score of zero to five, just like the yeah. Yelp, Yelp star system or the <laughs> universal star system, and then we send the test uh there's a bunch of them and typically some some of them decline then during the process because they feel it's hard like i mean this is a lot of tests so i, I think it's a good filter because we need people that are really interested in joining condor so maybe other recruiting teams will say i don't know i think this is too much uh we need to keep it easy yeah, it's true, but also you need to like identify that they are really interested in yeah. in yeah in joining Condor, and if they pass the test, there's a score for there, and you are basically uh, yeah uh, calculating both the scoring system during the interview and the test, and then if if they pass the test, also they go to the panel interview, and in the panel interview. There's also a score there, and and if they still are uh, over three, they become qualified, and that's that's basically it. And uh, at the end, you take a you take the decision, and you you offer to a candidate basically. I don't know if some there's something missing there. Yeah, no, I would say depending on the situation, on the urgency of filling the position. Like what our most important metric, and we measure uh, across that funnel, we measure everything, but I think qualified candidates, and we we're putting more and more emphasis on the premium candidates, right? Because it's not, you know, it's not a lot of times, you know, it's not enough just to be qualified. We we, we really want candidates to wow us and having a pool. I, like the holy grail that we want is five premium candidates per position, which usually means 10 or 15 qualified ones. Uh, and then, you know, you can, you can, afford the luxury of selecting amongst five really great options. Um, but no, I think that, I, I mean, needless to say, 
it's a lot of work to hire, to make a good hire. Now you do the math backwards and that's okay. Five pre, you know, let's say two, three premium candidates, eight qualified candidates, you know, uh, 12 or 15 panel interviews, 30 HR interviews, you know, a hundred applicants, you know, hundreds of <laughs> messages that you need to send. And obviously, you know, we optimize each part of the funnel, you know, throughout time. This is the process today and, you know, January 2023, but believe believe me, it was not like this, you know, <laughs> in 2020 or in, in 2017. No, I'm, I'm talking about the the metrics. It's, uh, I mean, you need a roundage, like a, a thousand uh, entries into the database to have a hundred applicants, to then have uh, 50. Uh, not to have 80 interviews because during the applicant they sometimes they they drop out yeah they drop out and then to have uh 80 interviews 40 qualified candidates and 35 percent of those qualified candidates needs to be premium because uh, as carlos was saying you need competition during the the process it's a it's a matter of that for the for us that we are deciding that it's complicated also that that you have competition maybe i am deciding between two great or three great people and i need to decide and then you get <laughs> i don't know a couple of hires maybe or even yeah. one so yeah well i'd say you know let's say i don't know three years ago it would take us you know two months to find one qualified candidate so obviously you, know, you were desperate and we would hire that person yeah it's qualified we need them let's hire them now you know it takes us two weeks to get five qualified candidates and two premiums so if we have an urgency we hire one of the two premiums there if not then we wait another two weeks to have five premiums and i don't know 13 14 15 qualified right and, and another thing that it's really good about our system is that i mean during the process we found amazing candidates but maybe you need to decide only one uh but the other ones we call it ready candidates and they are still in our database and we keep good relationships with them. Uh, uh, we also have a form that the candidates fill during our recruiting process to have a, a score on our own, like a client satisfaction score. And our relationships with the candidates really good. And sometimes happens that this is a candidate that maybe uh, they, they weren't hired during this process, but maybe in a second one, or in a third one, they they become the hires. So it's uh it's something that it's really helpful for us because we have a solid database. What type of talent are you hiring for typically? What are companies looking for? It, well, it's mark it's marketing, we focus on marketing positions. Um, and then you know there's really no no other boundaries other than that, you know, from account managers paid media analysts, uh, project managers, email, SEO, you know, designers, uh, web developers would fall in that category, although it's some somewhat of its own category. Um, but those, you know, yeah, marketing positions in general. What What's the expectation from a U.S.-based company uh, that they should expect? Um, and it probably depends on position, but like a range of, from a salary perspective. We say rule of thumb is a third, uh, you know, equal skills, equal years of experience. And as you mentioned, right, some, uh, for example, the developer, developers, because, you know, because they were expensive from since forever, it's one that is a little more common to outsource. So the rest of the world is a little more caught up. And that one, maybe, you know, you don't necessarily get to a third or you could, you know, if you know how and when to look at it and you have patience. But uh, I would say roughly a third, you know, it's a difference in salaries. Um, and but, then, but like adding all the costs, like for example, our fees and maybe legal things, taxes, whatever, it's it, it will be like a 50% cost savings. And that's that's also one thing to note is that in, in the US, the, the, pay, the pay gaps, the pay bands are, let's say, you know, somewhat... Uh, tight, meaning like maybe, you know, let's say a senior email marketing person 
according to Glaser and that makes between, let's say, seventy-five and a hundred thousand dollars a year, right? That's that's a, that's a difference of you know twenty-five percent. Um, in in Latin America, you, you, you find bands of 50, 60, 60, 30 percent, right? It depends on so many things. Um, so that's why it's important also to start. We'll give the our client a range of, of of what you know we think we can find in a reasonable amount of time. We don't also don't want to make the client wait too long. So, but we also ask for a budget number or for a target um, number from them, right? And also if if the the true urgency of filling the position, because again, you know, if you can afford to wait, you know, a couple more weeks, uh, then you know we might find you a. Uh, or you know you you can also get creative, right? You, you know you might need, especially if it's somebody that's starting that you want to train yourself. Uh, let's say it's a marketing analyst, right? Yeah, ideally that person would have let's say three years using Salesforce and HubSpot and and Mailchimp, etc. But you know maybe we've had a really great candidate with really great personality and grit and potential with only one year of experience in. I don't know SEO, but that it's really passionate about moving to email marketing, right? And you can find that person half of the price. So, like, we'll have those conversations with our clients um, because, again, you know, it, it, it's not the math is not as predictable as in the US. There's there's definitely creative ways to to decrease costs even further. There was an agency you worked with in California. I'd like to walk through what you did with them because they, uh, I think, you said they needed um over 10 people yeah what'd you do with them i mean that's uh i would say that's uh our biggest success story uh as uh, with the recruiting service um actually it was this was uh, an agency uh, they were uh familiar with uh outsourcing talent because they had a lot of people's a lot of people in the philippines uh, but they were struggling with time zone. And also they they mentioned uh yeah, like similar culture with the I mean the cultural similarities with the Philippines um were not that uh I mean what they wanted to. So um they came to us. And they started with only one position. I was guessing that they wanted to like identify we were good uh, bringing t uh, talent for them. We started with an account manager position, and it was like a I don't know, let's say a two or three uh, week period, and they felt really great with the process, and they hired this account manager. And later they say. We want to bring into the team 11 to 12 people between account managers and paid media managers or media buyers. Uh, but we want them really fast. We have a lot of projects going on and we need a team in Mexico. They open operations in Mexico too. I mean, I, I, I think that they, I don't know, maybe... They weren't as happy with the Philippines, so they, they decided to outsource in Mexico and they opened a company. They were incorporating in Mexico, but they don't have like a solid recruiting internal team. So we started to find these positions for for, for this agency. We thought it, it was going to be complicated. They wanted the, I mean, basically the 10 or 12 people in a month. And we were expecting to bring uh, those people in maybe two to three months. But at the end, I mean, I mean, basically all the team jumped into that client. Uh, it was at the end of the year, December. It's a complicated season because, I mean, the candidates, they are not usually looking for new opportunities. They are maybe expecting their bonuses. They are in Christmas mode, and it was going to be harder. But at the end, we feel basically those uh, the the eleven positions for them. And actually, <laughs> in January, they said that they want to bring 
three or four more people and they want to have a team of 40 to 50 people in Mexico by the end of the year. So I would say that's one of our biggest success cases. I want to talk about, thanks for walking through that. How do you navigate competing against yourself? So a company wants your services, like I want SEO services. Then they're like, well, maybe we could just, can you just hire us a team of SEO people (laughs) to do it? But they could also hire you to do it. So what do you find the difference between someone comes in and say, listen, I just want you to to do my SEO versus, you know what, you can hire us five people and we can have those five people for our company. Mm -hmm. I think a big factor is, do you have the expertise to do it from not not to execute it but from a from a supervising from yeah from a supervision perspective do you know even how to supervise do you know what you want to get out of it right do you know how to do it right you know and do you have the time to do it if if both of those are yeses then you know i think recruiting makes sense um if not then you know basically giving you a team that it's ready to perform that you know which hours of work are channeled via an account manager and a single point of contact that is dedicated to you uh, and saves you time managing and project managing everything then you know it makes more sense makes more sense that way right what has this turned into as we you know as we kind of said at the beginning other marketing and digital marketing agencies, they usually know what they're doing, right? Otherwise, they wouldn't be in business. Uh, so uh, maybe if it's a channel that is not in their, let's say, in their core offerings, right? If it's a, a, I don't know, if it's a creative agency and somebody requests to do something more technical, maybe then it makes sense to do some like white labeling work or bring us as an agency and do it. But for the most part, you know, agencies have become specialized and they're focusing on what they're good at and they just want you know somebody they can train in their own process right so again you know recruiting and staffing makes a lot of sense for for other agencies and companies that have you know already a couple people in their marketing team they have their maybe they have hired a couple of u.s agencies and realize how expensive they were and how slow they were and how little attention they paid them (laughs) <laughs> you know, and then okay, you know what? Let's hire somebody internal for that. But then you know they pay a hundred, you know, a hundred k a year, you know, for a person that's not so senior, and they have to manage all day. And that's like the ideal client for us because you know we, you know, that's that's how we're built to serve on the managed services, right? Pl- a, a team that's plug and play and saves you time, know what's what what they're doing, you know, it, it measures themselves, you know, obviously with a transparent measurement system on how many leads generating um and that's usually you know those b2b marketing teams that are trying to grow but are not sure how that's when the managed services makes more sense also you know when you have demands across channel because a lot of times you don't need only one channel or a full-time you know equivalent work for one person but you need a little seo a little web design a little paid media a little bit of everything right so it's like great, you know, you know, these guys can do it for you, and you can have on, you know, on-demand access to experts across marketing channels. Yeah, I think you bring up uh, some good points there because, you know, companies, you know, it's important to hire an agency in certain respects, and and I think companies underestimate sometimes the expertise, the project management, the supervision, the time management it takes to coordinate all. But even if you bring on someone who knows what they're doing you kind of need to have like a cohesive strategy and you have to have management and project, you know, all of that stuff in place, you know, to um, make everything run smoothly. So in which case an agency would be a good fit. Um, First of all, thank you both. Thanks for walking me through, you know, everyone that I've talked to and had on the show is constantly looking for talent and so i love how you walk through your process my i have one last question before i ask it i just want to point people to check out 
condoragency.com uh, and learn more. Check out more episodes of the podcast as well. My last question for each of you is, you know, um, Antonio, you mentioned the Carol Dweck book. Um, and I'm just wondering from each of you, any other resources, whether it's books, audio books, physical books, or um, resources, websites that you uh, look at that um, are that you consider valuable for you? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I really like uh, love to read, um, and speci specifically these type of books. Uh, and we try to to bring this culture also to the agency, and we are always uh, proposing new books to our employees. And for example, in my case, I love uh, what Daniel Pink it's it's doing. Uh, mm, the Drive it's a it's a book that 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 I think it's amazing and gives you a lot of recommendations for being a good leader. Um, also, when uh, from from Daniel Pink uh, because it's a uh, maybe you helps you how to, um, yeah, in times of the, the time internally, when to put the meetings uh, and things things like that. Uh, we, I mean, internally, uh, one of our most uh, important books, it's uh, Principles from Ray Dalio, it's actually, uh in the radical transparency value uh we use it uh, a lot and in general uh what else um uh but yeah i mean uh th those are recommendations that i give you uh in the top of mind yeah ray dalio i'm a huge fan of ray dalio of the book of well, the, the book is dense and long, so, you know, there you have a lot of things to think about and digest. He also has, uh, he he launched it somewhat recently. It's a test. It's a personality test that we also use, um, but it's a little more, let's say, practical than the traditional Brick Myers test. Um, so that's, I think, a, a resource that uh, you know, I believe is still free for, for companies to use. He also has a paid version for companies, you know, that you might want to look into. You know, we we had already built something similar internally, so we're not using that version. But like we, you know, we definitely consume and follow Ray Dalio's advice from a professional perspective, from a, even like me, from a personal perspective, I'm a huge fan. Like, for example, just something as, you know, as, as personal as meditating or not, I I was not a believer by any means until a few years ago that I heard him saying how much it helped him. So somebody that I respect and admire, you know, I started, you know, giving it a shot, for example, you know, so that, that's definitely someone that we that we follow. Um, I think those are the main ones. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you. Everyone check out condoragency.com. And thanks, everyone. What I got, you can't buy. Like a beach if you find the sand right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand